You may or may not know that, legally, cruise ships do not actually need to carry enough lifeboats for everyone on board. In fact, the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, the one that came in after the Titanic disaster, specifically states that the minimum number of lifeboats that a passenger ship needs must accommodate only 37.5% of the ship's capacity on either side. That's only 75% of the total number on board. The other 25% may be accommodated in life rafts instead. A life raft is just an inflatable survival craft that can accommodate passengers and crew in an emergency. This particular life raft was made by Savray, another YouTube channel that focuses on the engineering side of the maritime industry. They've published the second part of this life raft video where they'll show you why a life raft is shaped the way it is, what equipment it has on board, and where the equipment is stowed. You'll find a link to that video in the description down below. Anyway, if you've been around smaller boats, I'm talking about yachts or motorboats, you may have seen life rafts before. They're usually stored in a white fiberglass case and secured with a hydrostatic release. Basically, if your boat sinks, the water pressure will activate the hydrostatic release and fire a blade through the line securing the life raft, allowing it to float free. As it floats towards the surface, your sinking boat pulls the painter tight, inflating your raft. The fully inflated raft provides enough buoyancy to apply sufficient force to break the weak link, separating the life raft from your sinking vessel. Of course, you would usually aim to launch your life raft before your ship sinks. Small life rafts only have a capacity for between one and six people, making them light enough to deploy manually. On a ship, however, things are a little different. Their rafts are much larger, often with a capacity for 25 people, making them much heavier and much harder to launch. This one weighs around 180 kilos, or for my American friends, almost 400 pounds. Much of that weight is the drinking water that they need, which is one and a half litres per person. Of course, to see the full equipment in detail, remember to check out Savray's video after this one. Ships life rafts still have a hydrostatic release, so they will float free if needed, but again, the hope is that you can launch them before your ship sinks. Of course, with the large freeboard of a commercial ship, you can't easily throw it in and climb aboard, so you would actually board before it's even lowered into the water. Though it is possible to board at water level because ships do have rope ladders that you can climb down if needed. It's just much easier to get in at deck level instead, which you can do because larger rafts are launched by a davit. With davit launch rafts, you first attach the canister securing lines to your vessel. These stop the fiberglass canisters from falling into the water and creating a hazard during launch. Then, you attach the port and starboard bowsing lines to the appropriate cleats. Often you'll find them colour coded with the green starboard bowsing line attaching to the green cleat and the red line to the red cleat. Next, you open the cover on the canister to get to the main securing shackle, which you attach to the offload release hook of the davit. An offload release is a clever bit of kit that securely attaches when the life raft is at deck level. As you get close to the water, you arm the release by pulling on the arming line, unlocking the hook. The shape of the hook is such that when the weight of the raft is present, the hook stays in place. As soon as the weight lifts, the shape and mass of the hook itself swings it out of the way. Essentially, as soon as the raft touches the water, it automatically releases, hence the term offload release. It releases when the load comes off. Anyway, back on deck you've attached the main shackle of the raft to the davit, the canister securing lines to the ship, and the bowsing lines to the deck. You then lift the raft with the davit to swing it over the side. Once there, you pull the inflation cord, the raft inflates and the canisters swing clear and dangle from the canister securing lines. You then pull the raft to the ship using the bowsing lines so that it's ready to load. Remember, make sure you load the raft evenly and to capacity. As people get in, direct them to spread the load out as best you can. When everyone's in, you release the bowsing lines, slowly letting the raft swing clear of the ship's side. Once clear and safely hanging from the davit, the crew in the raft pull the brake release which lowers them down to the water. Near water level, you would stop, arm the release hook and then continue your descent. As soon as the raft touches the water and the weight comes off the hook, the raft is free. The crew on the ship can winch the hook back up to prepare the next raft for launching. In the water, powered survival craft will help manoeuvre the life raft clear of the ship. When I worked on cruise ships, the evacuation plan used the ship's fast rescue craft to tow the life rafts away from the ship's side and towards the bigger lifeboats. They had substantial engines, so are quite capable of towing fully laden life rafts. Of course, you don't need to tow them a long way, 
As long as you have the rafts and boats together, close to where the ship sinks, you stand the best chance of survival. Remember, the bridge will have sent out distress signals locally using VHF, maybe slightly longer range using MFHF radios, or even globally using Imarsat C or an EPIRB. All those communications will have contained the ship's position, so if no further communication can be sent, you know that is the first place that rescuers are going to start looking. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Remember, go and check out part 2 of this video using the link in the description. Safray will take you through the tools and equipment found inside a life raft and explain why it is shaped the way it is. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.